to you. Good morning. Good morning. Today, we are celebrating Palm Sunday. Amen. As of last night at sundown, that's when the Holy Week started. We got a whole Holy Week. Now, Jesus made his triumphant um, walk and arrived into uh, Jerusalem and he knew all ready that this trip would be his sacrificial death for the son of humanity. So when you look around, uh, we have some palm crumbs uh, in the place of the church. And I'm going to read scripture that relate to it. Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, lonely and sitting on a donkey, a coat, a foal, which means that there was a small baby donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the coat, laid their clothes on them, and set them on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. And also they cut down palm branches and put in the dusty road. Then the multitude who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. And Hosanna means save now. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So I want to say to you right now that I wanted to talk about the wooden cross that is out on our porch. And it has a purple cloth on it. And during the time of Jesus living in the ancient times, that the purple was known as royalty. And now we even wearing this royalty, and I didn't know if she was going to wear the same purple. <laughs> what God will do for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the purple was... Uh, it's out on the porch, letting us know that we can still use that royal purple. Yeah. And it's going to represent the wooden cross there until Friday. Because coming up Friday, when Jesus will be crucified, absolutely crucified, early morning. And he had to be buried at uh, Sab the Sabbath. They had they had to bury him early on. So Friday, we're gonna put on a black cloth because when Jesus was crucified, they had put the soldiers had put him in a purple robe and made mockery of him. Put on a crown of thorns and said, King of the Jews. But when it was time for him to go to the cross, they took the purple robe off and put back on his garment. But still they mocked him, getting him ready to go on the cross. And King, do you have that feeling where the nails started being hammered into the hands and the feet and how they treated him. But he had, they had 
given permission from Pilate to do the crucifixion. Now, when he was up there, there were seven last words, but I'm not going to go over those. But when we think about how Jesus must have hung there on that cross, he gave all that he had, our precious Jesus, yeah. the one that keep our sins away, yeah. our precious, precious Jesus. And so today, as we go into this week, let us remember that we can use our purple to keep sin away from us. Now on Friday, I'm putting the black cloth on that wooden cross outside to let people know that this is the time when Jesus went through a terrible, terrible crucifixion. But on Sunday morning when you come back, uh, Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, you're going to see a white cloth on that wooden cross. <laughs> Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. You're going to see a white cloth there letting you know that the purity, the purity of our son Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the of the world. So as we have this holy week facing us, let us do some love. Yeah. Let us do some peace. Yeah. Let us watch out and do something for someone that Jesus wants us to love on. So I thank you, God. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. I love you today, God. Let us bow our heads and let's pray a few minutes. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. You're the only one, Lord, when we have sin and trouble, you're always there, God. You are our special, special, special refuge, God. We can go up under your wings, God, and you will take care of us, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bring more love into our sanctuary, God. Into our families, God. Into our community, God. Into our nation, God. We need you, God. There's so much hatred going on and people don't truly understand the sins that they are doing, God. But we need you, God. Have mercy today, God. And I give you all this praise today, God. We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful Holy Week, God, because you will be there for us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, God. I ask this in your precious name. In the name of Jesus, I call your name righteous, God.
burdens and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Father God, we come to you right now, God, just thanking God for being a great God. We thank you, God, for looking down on us last night, God, and just watching over us from all hurt, harm, and danger. God, we believe that we are here for a purpose, God. And that purpose is to give your name all the praise. So right now, God, we will open up our mouths and we will shout to the mountaintop. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Last night, God, last night. It could have been our last night. But we are here this morning, God, just to say thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning, God. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for giving us the use and the activity of our lives, God. Thank you, God, just for being God. But it's Palm Sunday, God, so not only thank you, God, but thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who made his way into the room this morning. So right now, God, we say, Hosanna, we need you, God. Hosanna, save us now, God. Hosanna, heal us now, God. Hosanna, make a way for us now, God. Hosanna, we need you. We need you right now, God. So right now, we ask God that your presence, God, that, that's not just here, God, but that is active. That it moves through every person, God, that's in this building. That it rests on our soul, God. That it gives us peace, God, when we are in trouble, God. That it gives us a sense of calmness, God, when things are chaotic, God. That it, that it lets us know, God, that everything, everything will be all right. So, God, right now we look to your word, God, just for a little bit of comfort, knowing, God, that our future will be better than our past, God. All Say amen, amen, and amen. Mm. If you would please grab your grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles, please, and with me, turn to the book of Matthew. We'll be looking at Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, I ask that if you are able to, would you please stand with me for the reading of God's word. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. If you have that scripture, would you please let me know by saying amen. If you don't say hold on. Amen. We are all there. Matthew chapter 21. We are going to begin our reading this morning with verse number 2. Matthew chapter 21, verse number 2. And it reads, it's this. Saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. Matthew chapter 21, verse number 2. It reads, saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. As you go to your seats, I want you to pray with me and think with me from this sermon topic. I am not above the donkey. I am not above the donkey. You ever dealt with someone you thought was uppity? It's, it's a challenge, isn't it? To have everything you say or do be judged or scrutinized by someone who seems to hold themselves at a high esteem. All right, all right. It is it, is downright tiring to have everything that you do and say be judged by someone who thinks that they are better than you. It it gets under my skin to be honest to see someone so engulfed in themselves to where the thought or concern for others is ignored. I, I was trying to be nice, but it gets on my last nerve when someone who is well off looks down on the less fortunate. All right, all right. You, you, you know I'm telling the truth because we all know someone who thinks too highly of themselves. Right, right. You, you have that one friend in the group that think that they are better than the rest of you. You, you have that one co-worker that ain't the boss, but walks around trying to tell everybody else what to do and how to do it. If, if that's not your testimony, we all have that family member who just thinks that they are all that in a bag of chips because they may own their own home or because they child went and graduated from college. They, they, they placed themselves on a pedestal because they married and didn't have a child out, out of wedlock. We all know somebody who thinks that they are better than the rest. And to be 
truthful, St. Paul, you can look at yourself in the mirror. Come on now. And you can admit to yourself that you have that internal battle yourself. We, we all have those moments where we look at our lives and feel like we made it. And as a consequence, we get prideful. We, we get entitled. We get big headed. Grandma would say, we start to smell ourselves. Gr gr grandma, she could spot that attitude from a mile away. And she would warn us. She would get us together in the quickness. She would warn us about being too proud or too prideful to where what was a blessing you should be thankful for, you ruined it by boasting about it. And the scripture, the scripture, it backs up grandma all the time. James chapter 4, number 6 says, God, he opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. First John chapter 2, verse number 16 says that the pride you possess is not from the Father, but it comes from the devil. Proverbs chapter 15 says, God, he tears down the house of the proud. And Jeremiah, that good old weeping prophet, he covers it all. He says, let not the wise boast in wisdom. The, the mighty boast in the might, nor the rich boast in their riches. But if you're going to boast about anything, then you should boast in the fact that you know the Lord. That's where we find ourselves this morning. We see Jesus, who who they've been who they've been trying to crown King and Messiah, preparing himself for his triumphant entry. This this is Jesus. This is his grand entry, and it is supposed to be spectacular. It is supposed to be grand. It is supposed to be over the top. But instead, Jesus he humbles himself. I, I know they didn't understand it, but Jesus is not basking in the celebrity of what they're trying to get him to bask in, but he humbles himself. Yes, yes, he healed the blind, you and the devil, but still, Jesus, he humbled himself. Yes, Jesus, he cast out demonic spirits and he raised the dead, but still, Jesus, he humbled himself. This is the Jesus who fed the 5,000 and turned water into wine, but still, Jesus, he humbled himself. And he teaches us no matter you to remain humble. So he, he gathers his disciples right here in verse number 2 saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. Listen, if you want to be better, if you want to understand how you can be better, listen, first you have to make the humble choice. Jesus, Jesus got his disciples around and he told them this is what I want. This is Jesus. So this, this is not all that Jesus could get. This is not all that Jesus could have. This wasn't his only option, but he chose the donkey. You, you can imagine the people expecting the king, the Messiah, to come in on something royal. And, his, and he tells his disciples to go to the town ahead of him. Go get the donkey and bring it to me. You, you, you read the scripture of Jesus. He understood that the message of his choice, it was bigger than the moment of his choice. And Jesus, he understood that his choices was not about him, but about fulfilling what God initially sent him to earth to do, his interest. It will either support the assignment or support his own selfish agenda. So he chose the donkey. You can, you can recall if you was here from last Sunday when the people on the land was trying to name him king because of what he's done. Yeah. But in that moment, it wasn't time. Well, now he is saying, it is time, but I am in control of how you see me. Oh, the the donkey he chose, it represented something. This, this, this donkey tied to the prophecy that we can find in Zechariah, which here it affirms Jesus' royalty. And it's, it's in Zechariah 9 and 9 where it tells us that our king, our king, that beloved Jesus, he will come to us righteous and victorious on a donkey. So Jesus had to choose the donkey because it was already written in God's word. The reason we have a hard time with life is because we don't choose what's in God's word. We can't get ahead because we don't choose what's in God's word. We battle things we don't have to battle because we don't choose what's in God's word. Child of God, the best way to get through this life on the level that God wants you to be at is to humble yourself to the word of God.
to pray. Get up. God gives you to pray. Get up. God gives you to dance. Get up. God gives you to preach. He didn't do you to sit down, but he said, brother, this is I need you to be steadfast and immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Here it is. For the work that you do, it will not be in vain. Not that you don't do people who can thank God for the call. of 
the palm tree. Some people, they cut the branches of the palm tree and they laid it down. While others waved them as he passed by. Yeah. Some people, they laid the palm trees down. And others, they waved them as he passed by. Can you see it? Can you see Jesus coming down the road and you got palm branches and you have their cloaks laid out about the road and you have some people just waving the palm tree as he passed by. Listen, either way, you decided to do it, it all was to celebrate Jesus. These palm trees, I have to say about these palm trees, these palm trees, uh, these branches, they signify victory. Okay. <laughs> they were waving the palms which signify victory uh -huh. while shouting Hosanna which is translated mother to mean save now All right. All right. catch this catch this in verse 8 they are waving the palms in victory yes. <laughs> but in verse 9 they are shouting Hosanna which means save now Okay, now let me let me let me slow it down. In verse number eight, they're waving the palm trees in victory. In verse number nine, they're shouting Hosanna, which means say now, okay, so proud. This is an extravagant celebration because they are claiming a victory that they don't have yet. In verse number eight, they're waving in victory about a thing that they're asking for. In verse number nine, which means save me now. And I just want to know, who can praise God for the not yet in your life? Who can praise God for the healing you don't have yet? Who can praise God for the promotion you don't have yet? Who can sit up and shout for the blessing and the breakthrough that you don't have yet? Listen. Verse number eight. I'm signifying victory. And I'm asking you to see. They are, they are, listen, I'm about done this last lap. They are getting so excited. Verse number 10 says, the time Jesus actually got into Jerusalem, cousin, the whole city was turned.
the donkey. That donkey is what led victory into your life. That bad donkey, so humble. This was a part of what I deleted last night. Here it is. I want you to understand. People, when we looked at Jesus riding the donkey, we questioned Jesus, well, why would you ride a donkey? But if we look from the donkey's perspective, yeah. Glory. Yeah. Glory. okay, yeah. if we look from the donkey's perspective, that was a day of honor. Yes, 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 yes. Can I tell you? Because some of us may get in the mood of acting, acting up in it. Yeah. Jesus will always be Jesus. Don't, don't get your feelings hurt. But we are the donkey that he used. Yes. The, the, the donkey was pure. Yeah. The donkey, yeah, nobody ever touched, nobody ever rode the donkey, nobody ever used the donkey. Yeah, yeah. But we sit in here with our used selves. <laughs> and God, Jesus, he still decides to use us. Yeah. You can be bougie, you can be, you can be all that other stuff, but I'm grateful. Yeah. I'm grateful because people, guess what, they look, they look at Jesus using you, and they say, why would Jesus use that donkey? Why would Jesus use that donkey? Why would Jesus use that donkey and that donkey and that? Why would Jesus use this donkey? When he's so much, he deserves so much. He can pick any, 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 anybody else. But he decides to use this donkey. Just, just, you know, I don't know if you can comprehend that. Listen, you're a donkey. And Jesus says, listen, go to Lake Helen. I'm going to send my spirit to Lake Helen. And I want you to bring this donkey. Name Mike. Bring this donkey. Name Darius. Bring me this donkey. Name Mother Fowler. Bring me this donkey. Name to me. Bring me this donkey. Name Bring me this donkey. And he says, I'm not just going to call you and bring you here, but I'm going to use you for my glory. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, God. Because even though we don't have victory yet, we are waving our palms. We, we, we are waving our palms, God, over the, the sicknesses. God, we're, we're waving, waving our palms, God, over the distress, over, over the depression, God. We are waving our palms, God, because victory is already yours. So we wave our palms, God. We wave our palms and we lay them at your feet. And we know, God, that you will make everything, everything, everything all right. So, God, we remember you today. We remember your son, God, who, who chose the donkey and used it for your glory. We give you praise. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God some praise. Would you please stand all over the building? Please stand to your feet. If, if you don't know that man named Jesus, if you know him and you know that y'all relationship ain't what it should be, or if you just desire prayer, the altar is open for you. The altar is open. All you have to do is just come down. And we, your St. Paul family, will join hands. And we, we won't join hands, but we will pray for you. <laughs> we will pray that God do exactly what you need him to do. How he desires to do it. This is the time to come down to join the church, this body of believers, or to simply just ask for a prayer. This is the time. This is the time. Amen, amen. You may go ahead and take your seats while we pray.
Father God, we come to you right now as humble as we can. And I'm praying for my sisters in Christ. I'm praying, God, that you show yourself to be strong in their times of weakness. I pray, God, that whatever it is they may be asking for, whatever they are crying about, God, that you supply their needs. Give them what they need, God, to make it through this life with the mindset to please you and you alone. Lord, we have to understand that friends, they come and go. Money, it comes and go. God, relationships come and go. God, but your word tells us that you will be there. You will be there with us in our times of trouble. So God, send your spirit down now. Comfort them. Let them know, God, that everything, and I know it sounds crazy because of what you're going through, but I believe that everything will be all right. God, he tells us not to worry. Do not worry. Don't be anxious for anything. But thank God for everything. So God, we come to your throne right now, God, asking that you wipe her tears. You wipe the tears that we don't see. You hold her when we can't see her. You touch her and keep her, God, when she's by herself. Let her know, God, that she is a beautiful queen. That she is royalty. God, we, we pray right now, God, that as she submit her life to you, you begin to work in her and you fill those empty spaces, God. God, we believe that you can. We believe that you can and that you will. We believe that you can and you will. There is nothing and I mean nothing to hard for God. So God, whatever she is in need of, I pray that you give it to her. <laughs> that you give it to her as long as it is, in, it is in alignment with your will. So God, we, we thank you, God, for the transformation that's about to take place. We thank you, God, that we are done trying to be like the world. We are done trying to fit in with the world. But we are going to lean and depend on you, God. And we pray that you direct our path, God. We thank you, God, for this life that came down for prayer. We thank you, God, for, for Mother Fowler, God. We pray. And we thank you, God, just for her life and for her calling to this ministry, God. We, we thank you, God, for the influence that she has on this church. We, 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 we praise your name, God, for the opportunity, God, to be impacted by her ministry, by her words, by her song, by her scripture, by her understanding of who you are. Some things, God, we can't pay for. So, God, right now, we, we will appreciate her for being here and being willing to be used by you. So, God... As we close this prayer, as they head back to their seats, I pray that their future, that their future is led by you, by your spirit, by your word. Use them for your glory. Put them on assignment for you. Don't let them sleep at night until they accept the call that is on their life. Somebody's life is in need of their ministry, God, so we ask right now that you speak to them and that they begin to walk upright. And according to your word, God, we thank you. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen, amen.
Listen, you look 
good. I believe we had a great Palm Sunday worship experience. Amen. Listen, it is our prayer that you could connect with us either on Facebook or you could just tag, uh, share. You could uh, just comment, send us a message. Let us know that you enjoy service. We want to connect with you even though you are not in the building. So use those different platforms to get in touch with us here at St. Paul. And I am looking forward to our Resurrection Sunday. Amen. We are celebrating, of course, his death, his burial, but more importantly, that he got up on that good old Sunday morning. Amen. 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 Until next Sunday, may the Lord God bless you and keep you. And may the Lord God make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord God grant you peace as you go through this week and grant you favor as you enter into these gates on next Sunday morning. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.